is my life I sold a lot of dope so my wrist is all lies They wanna kill me, they wanna live my life I'd have done a lot of dirt, I earned my stripes as we all know by now, Canada isn't always as safe wonderland the rest of the world makes it out to be. When people picture Canada, they think of igloos, everyone apologizing to each other, maple syrup, and free healthcare. But if you've been watching my channel for a while, or even just keeping up with the Toronto rap scene in general, it's clear that some parts of Canada are plagued with large amounts of gang violence, just like some other notable major cities in the US and other parts of the world. And this is true for all parts of Canada, and not just Toronto. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the gang based in Metro Vancouver, British Columbia, named the Brothers Keepers. They have strong ties with the Driftwood Crips from Toronto and have been known by police to be involved with some major shit and have lots of interesting stories for us to cover. They've even been involved with some international contracted killings and have connections with one of the biggest and most feared biker gangs in the world, the Hells Angels. Let's get into the backstories of these gangs and their connection first. The Driftwood Crips are some of, if not the most well-known street gang in Toronto, since it's been a powerful gang in Toronto since it was created in the late 1980s. But in more modern times, it's been popularized even more by many buzzing rappers from the area, and operates out of Jane and Finch and the surrounding area along Driftwood Avenue. Most people have heard about this gang when talking about the Toronto rap scene, and by many rappers from the area representing Wasp Gang or Nee Gang in their songs, and all over their social medias. Notable names from this area are of course Pressa, YG, Houdini, Genie, among many others, since this set has probably produced more notable artists than anywhere else currently in the Toronto rap scene. However, they're not all about music either. They've been known by police to be part of many major criminal activities and have had multiple raids take place on them, with hundreds of people being arrested. They're a huge criminal organization and have ties with many others, from both inside of Toronto and in other places in Canada as well. One of those ties being with the Brothers Keepers based in Metro Vancouver, BC, who you're going to learn all about in the rest of the video. But first I'll talk about how they're even connected in the first place, since that'll give context to why they're even relevant to the Toronto rap and gang scene. There's lots of evidence that these two gangs have ties. We'll start with talking about the Surrey rapper Vlad two times. His name is Nassim Mohammed and was first confirmed by police to be an associate of the Brothers Keepers when he was seen in pictures of a Vancouver Harbour cruise with them back in 2018. He was confirmed by police to have been a feature on a song with Driftwood rapper YG. The song's name is Vlad Season 1 and is part of YG's 35 Gene mixtape. Mohammed raps under the name Vlad two times and Loki has some pretty decent verses. During the song, he mentions being a brother's keeper, while YG talks about flipping packs in Vancouver. The connection there is pretty obvious, but the ties don't stop there. Mohammed was also seen chilling with Pressa all the way over in Russia, in a video for Pressa's song Michelangelo. He clearly has a good relationship with some Driftwood rappers, and this connection is cemented even further with him being arrested for crimes he did in Ontario. He was caught and arrested in Vancouver where he was sent back to Ontario for charges in relation to assault, pointing a firearm, theft, and more. Another case that the police mentioned the connection of these two gangs in took place in 2017, when three 16 year old boys were caught and seized of loaded guns, drugs that were prepackaged to sell, and $30,000 in cash during a raid on a home in Kelowna, BC. Sources say that these boys were already well known to police and have ties with the Driftwood Crips who themselves have ties with BC the Lower Mainland and even ties from coast to coast all across Canada, which aid their associates with the trafficking of drugs all across the country. They also mention how the Driftwood Crips are aligned with their brothers keepers and run drug lines for them. More connections with these two gangs involve the Driftwood rappers Jaini, YS, and once again YG, being in and out of the metro Vancouver area. YS was killed in a house in South Surrey and Jaini and YG are constantly chilling in Vancouver and even shoot some of their music videos there. All over the internet you will find tons of rumors regarding what type of business the two gangs have together. Probably one of the most common theories is that since YG and Janie are constantly in Vancouver and even shoot some of their music videos there, the Driftwood Crips pay their brothers keepers to provide them with protection, since YG and Janie have lots of enemies. But once again this is just a rumor from the internet and hasn't been confirmed by any reputable source. Now let's get into the main topic of the video. What is the Brothers Keepers gang and just how major are they? Let's get into it. 
The Brothers Keepers are a relatively new gang of mixed ethnicity, but is mainly Punjabi. It was created only three years ago in 2017, according to police. However, just because they are new doesn't mean that they aren't well known by police or haven't been a part of large scale criminal activities. The gang was created by Govinder Grewal, who had been one of the leaders of the Red Scorpion Aligned Traffickers for some time, before he felt like creating his own organization, which he obviously named the Brothers Keepers. The Red Scorpions are a different major gang that the Brothers Keepers were allied with and have been a major criminal organization in British Columbia and Alberta for decades. Greywell had gotten his new gang's name tattooed across his chest in stylized writing, which is a clear trend for all of the gang's members. As in probably the most famous picture of them, the members are seen shirtless with their matching tattoos printed across their chest. The Brothers Keepers and other Indo-Canadian gangs' main and original criminal activities are said to be the trafficking of heroin. Canadian Punjabi crime bosses are reported to use their family connections back home in Punjab to receive the drugs from the Golden Crescent nations of Afghanistan, Pakistan and Iran, which is a global site for opium production and distribution. Since then, many gangs have expanded into other crimes such as money laundering, extortion, kidnapping, and one of the most lucrative of them all, contract killing, with the high rates for a contracted kill ranging from $50,000 to $100,000. Keep this in mind for later on in the video. The Brothers Keepers are reported to have beef with the King Crime Group, which was created by former members of the Brothers Keepers, who decided to split off and create their own group, after there was a split between members. And this ended up causing a lot of violence and is a beef that is still going on today. The King Crime Group's member, Randy King, was shot and killed in what was believed to be an inside job in October 2017. And two months later in December of the same year, the founder of the Brothers Keepers, Govinder Grewal, was shot and killed as well in retaliation. And there have been many more cases of gang violence caused from this beef that's happened since then. What's interesting is that Vancouver and its surrounding population has been seeing its own version of a mini drill scene due to this beef, in a similar way to places like Toronto. The main artists involved with this back and forth dissing to the likes of Songs are Lolo Lansky, who is aligned with the King Crime Group and is buzzing in Vancouver, and even got a shout out from the game. There's also t from the Brothers Keepers. Tisev had made a song called My Life, where he pays respect to his dead friend and former leader Gavinder Grewal, and also talks about shooting people and how he has bodies. While on the other side, Lolo Lansky dropped a diss track named Dead Man, where he disrespects Gavinder Grewal and mocks his death, and also talks about shooting people. But what makes this way more interesting is that these diss tracks were actually getting shared across many BCY news channels. This is because during Lolo Lansky's diss track, he puts the police call of when Govinder Grewal's brother, Manbir Grewal, found him dead in his apartment and called the ambulance. It's pretty intense shit. The operator is heard giving the apartment number and asking for his brother's name, and Manbir is heard saying his name. The police themselves have confirmed that this indeed was the authentic 911 call and wasn't staged or anything like that. But the cops are confused as to how Lolo Lansky was able to get a hold of the call and they still don't know to this day. And this stuff happened almost an entire year ago. Leave him dead like bro, did his OG. Did his OG. Address is 1550 Fern Street. Dang, dang, dang. Okay. In apartment 2502. 2502. Okay. Reporting a gunshot wound, deceased patient. Hi, okay, so what's happening? Uh, I, I called to check up on my brother and then found out. And that is what? Shot. He's been shot. Okay. Anybody else in the house apart from you? No. Okay, is there a gun there at all? No, there isn't. Okay, okay, is he cold or anything like that? Yeah, cold. What's your brother's name? Yeah, I'm the girl. And over a year after t had dropped his song, My Life, he was arrested and charged in Edmonton for the murder of Randy King, who we talked about earlier, and also another man named Jagmir Mali. Jagmir was said to be an innocent university student who was mistaken for someone else, since some of his family members had gained connections. The charges against him were approved by the BC Prosecution Service in December 2019. A month before that, T7 and some other Brothers Keepers members had attended a funeral of a deceased Hells Angels member named Suminder Grewal from the Hardside chapter based in Surrey, BC. Suminder Grewal was responsible for creating an alliance between them. It's pretty insane how the Brothers Keepers were allied with the gang as large as this. The Hells Angels are one of the biggest biker gangs in the world and maybe the biggest gang in all of British Columbia. This is major shit. Speaking of major shit, they've been involved in some pretty big international criminal activities, including some of their members being involved with a contracted killing all the way over in Dubai. On May 4th, 2016, a Turkish drug trafficker was shot seven times in the head 
and twice more in the chest and hand, obviously fatally. He was killed in one of Dubai's most luxurious neighborhoods while sitting in his car. Two men ran up and blasted away with their silenced guns, killing the Turkish drug trafficker instantly. After the hit, the alleged Metro Vancouver residents and associates of their brother's keepers, Harpreet and Garcia, rushed to the airport in a rented car and got on a plane back to Canada before the Dubai police was able to identify them as suspects. Days later, authorities in the United Arab Emirates gave the RCMP the names of the suspected killers, but at the time, the RCMP refused to comment on it, leaving the Canadian media with only brief news stories about the two unidentified suspects who were involved in a murder all the way over in Dubai. Weeks after the hit in Dubai, the bodies of both of the hitmen were found, one dumped in a blueberry field and one in a burnt vehicle. The two hitmen are alleged by police to have been hired by an Iranian-born drug lord based in Turkey. So these two Canadian Brothers Keepers associates were hired to do a hit by a drug lord from Turkey on another Turkish drug trafficker all the way over in Dubai. This is about as international as it gets. But about a week after the two Brothers Keepers associates completed the job, they both ended up getting killed as well. This is some wild ass shit. All the organizations involved are clearly not amateur. And what makes this even more major is that the drug lord who allegedly hired the hit is a suspect for murders in other countries and is a notorious gangster. He even got seized out of two tons of heroin by the DEA, owned by him and a fellow smuggler. Two fucking tons, that's a stupid amount of heroin. And this is when the violence started. The rival drug traffickers suspected that it was a drug lord who hired their brother's keepers who tipped off the DEA. Due to this, his luxury SUV was targeted by hitmen. This resulted in his daughter and nephew both being killed. His former smuggler friend and several other associates were charged in the double homicide. Police say to retaliate, he then hired the Canadian assassins to take out the Turkish drug trafficker. His smuggler's friend's lawyer was also shot and killed as well. I had already heard about the Brothers Keepers for a while now, since their name is always thrown around when talking about the Driftwood Crips and the Toronto rap scene in general. But I had no idea that they were this major and that the Metro Vancouver area had its own share of gang violence and criminal activity until I started researching for this video. I think this goes to show that there are many major gangs all across Canada and lots of them are connected with one another, ranging across many provinces. The rest of the world shouldn't sleep on what's going up north because gang culture is everywhere and this shit's not a joke. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more in the future. Feel free to comment any suggestions for new video ideas, feedback, or any insults you may have. Thanks for watching and have a good one.